Hey everyone, welcome to Dry Bar Reviews, where today we're doing an in-depth review on the kit lens that came with the D7500 I just picked up and did a review on. Now, as the kit lens, this is supposed to be able to handle a variety of situations very well. So today we're gonna find out if that is indeed the case. Let's crack this open and take a look at what it can do. All right, looking at the box, you can see each side basically has the same information, just letting you know it's a Nikkor lens. 18 to 55 millimeter with an f-stop from 3.5 to 5.6 G. And of course it's got that vibration reduction or VR technology, which is new stabilization technology that's supposed to ensure sharp photos, steady videos, and get this, enhanced low light capabilities. And that's really what catches my fancy. So I'm curious to see how that works out for us today. Besides that, looks like we got some warranty information, one year warranty and four years of extended service coverage, which is great. And beyond that, it, uh, it's made in Thailand. <laughs> there you go. That's always good to know. All right. Looks like right up top we got our manual and warranty information. Great. And this is what I always find interesting is how do they package their beautiful lens? Okay. I give them a B plus for packaging. Nothing extravagant in there, just cardboard padding. Um, and a plastic sack. So uh, I always like to see bubble wrap, but you know, maybe they're trying to save a million dollars per million units or something. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now this is a lens that boasts a compact lightweight design. And I'll say first impression wise, it is indeed compact and lightweight, but clearly that's because it's plastic. So some people actually have this as an issue. Uh, they like their metal metallic components in their lenses. They don't like to see a ton of plastic. Well, <laughs> this is lightweight and there's a lot of plastic going on. So if that's a problem with you, maybe not the lens for you, but for me, it's all about performance. I don't really care so much about the aesthetics overall, as long as it performs very, very well. This is actually an interesting point for me. So this is actually a lock button to keep it compact, but you cannot use the lens in this position. If you're using the lens, you have to unlock it and boom, there we go. So. Here's 55 millimeters. If we zoom down to 18, this is the same length. It's the same length on each side of the zoom and it doesn't really move in very far. So <laughs> if you're thinking this is gonna be compact while it's in use, it is not. That's actually extremely long in my mind for a kit lens, that's for sure. But again, it comes down to capabilities. And I just noticed as I was turning that, it's a little looser, about 45 to 55 millimeters there. And then, in loose right at the 18, right before you get to 18 millimeters there. Not too big of a deal there, but I'll be curious to see if that affects my ability to take a smooth zoom during video, especially when I hit right at the end there. Ah, yes, I love that. That's a nice smooth focus ring right there. Ah, it's beautiful. <laughs> Speaking of autofocus, by the way, we'll take a look at this too, because this is supposed to be an ultra fast, near silent autofocus powered by what they're calling a pulse motor which is utilizing stepping motors. So they say virtually no sound that's gonna be picked up from your video recording on the camera zone audio pickup. So I'll be curious to see if that's actually true. Now on another note, I do like, you know, substantial covers and I will say this, it kind of surprises me. They had this low budget looking back cover. I mean, honestly, how much more could it cost for them to just keep going with their branded back lens covers? But. Um, this is personal preference right there. It'll function as it's supposed to as a protective backing. I just, I like the brand. Come on, give me the branded front and back, guys. What's going on there? All right, let's slap this on the camera and see how it performs. All right, in case you guys didn't know, the D7500 is an F-mount camera, and this is an F-mount compatible lens. So let's get her on. All right, moment of truth here. So what you'll find when you first put this lens on is... Uh, your camera will let you know it's locked, right? So you can't just go to town and wonder why your pictures aren't coming out. Smart enough to know that. This is actually what I'm curious about real quick is the noise. So let's go into video mode. We're already there, good, nice. Okay, we'll go to live view. Can you guys hear that? Okay, I'm gonna bring it in real close. All right, so sure enough, I wouldn't call it virtually silent. That's kind of strong language there, but it is very, very quiet. So I'll give them kudos for that. But let's take a look and see if you can pick it up on the video I'm gonna take with this. 
So if you can pick up any of that audio, I'm going to give them bad marks for that. So we'll see how that goes. And let's see how this lens performs in a variety of conditions and if it actually holds up to the expectations that are rightfully placed upon kit lenses. Is this a worthy kit lens for the D7500? Here we go. millimeter backed up by the D7500 did a great job in continuous autofocus mode taking these pictures with a little bit of action going on and as you can see pretty crisp pretty clear shots even though I didn't necessarily have the ability to set up where my subject were placed or how the lighting was going in each individual picture not only that I was impressed that as far as lens flare goes it's basically non-existent and I tried here to even put the Sun at an aggressive angle to the lens and just just barely there so I found that pretty neat there is however some barrel distortion in this lens as you can see here obviously my driveway is not a curved line and what I did here is I repeated three different zooms from 18 millimeter 35 millimeter and 55 millimeter while also repeating the process at different f-stops so the first set was 3.5 I repeat it here with a 13 f-stop and then I'm gonna do it once more at its max f-stop 22 and as is typical you're gonna see a little bit more barrel distortion apparent at the higher f-stop level and even a little bit of lens flare going on there. I will say, however, that this wasn't really that noticeable when I was taking photos, and it's pretty rare, at least in my case, to take photos where I've got a nice straight line towards the bottom of the field of view or the top. But it is nice to know before you purchase a lens. Now here I wanted to show what I talked about in my overall review of the D7500, and that's the autofocus. And as you can see here with photos, it does a fantastic job picking up the focus, and it's actually pretty snappy. I'm actually impressed by how quickly it does that. But all that goes out the window when you switch into video recording. And as someone who enjoys videography, I just really find that to be essential. So here you can see me forcing it to go back and forth in continuous autofocus mode between the same shots. And it's taking at least two to three, sometimes four times as long to focus on the new set compared to when I'm in photography mode. And not only that, as you cross over the strings here it's just having a very difficult time figuring out where it needs to be focused on and that's not really an effect most people are going for when they're taking videos in continuous autofocus mode and this is probably one of the truest examples of why i would be disappointed in the autofocus of the d7500 and this lens as you see as i come from the ground up and look at a distant horizon line the autofocus goes out and focuses on it as it should um, but as soon as i mess with the zoom it completely loses it and it happens right here and then it has to refine that focus, and that's just a consistent issue that happens in video mode, unless I'm the one controlling the autofocus. But besides that, the lens did a fantastic job, as they claimed it would, with taking vibrant colors, nice depth going on there, and of course being able to take low light shots like this one, uh, it was a six second exposure, just beautiful photography with that. And so as far as the photos are concerned, I found that to be pretty much spot on what they claimed this lens could do. However, at times the autofocusing left things to be desired even in photo mode and especially in video mode. Well, there you go, the new 55 millimeter kit lens for the D7500. A pretty fantastic all around lens as they claimed, except for maybe the compact notion and of course the autofocusing I went over, which I found a bit lacking in my own opinion. Now, if you wanna check out this lens for yourself, you can check it out in the description down below. Don't forget to comment and let me know what you think and subscribe if you're not subscribed and I'll see you next time on Drive-By Review.